Right, this is episode two of the Packet Tracer uh, demonstrations. Um, following up from our last lab or last video, the, this is the current setup that we have. The very first thing that we want to start doing, especially if this is new to you in getting into Cisco, is identifying how to be able to navigate through these devices. So if I go and click on this particular router over here, you'll see I've got the physical aspects of this and they're really useful for doing things in Packet Tracer like turning on and off um, the devices as need be. We've got the configuration. So we can see its display name that's going to appear over here. We can see its host name that's going to appear in the actual uh, configuration portion. So of course, this would be one of the first things we want to do is go and update this and make this something a little bit more meaningful. So for example, this may be the branch router and let's make this branch router one. So for, for the very first branch. Now, if I change that, you'll notice it changes the little logo over here, but it won't impact the logo that you would see inside the configuration. Now, Packet Trace makes it easy for us to do it through here, through a little UI, but if this was a real router or a real Cisco device, there is no UI that allows you to just do this quickly, right? You have to do this through the CLI as you go and configure it. So I'm gonna try and avoid using any of this configuration tab as much as I can and do everything through the actual CLI. So through the CLI itself, as you've booted it up, the very first thing it's going to say is, hey, would you like to enter the initial configuration? Uh, the answer is no, I don't, right? So I don't want to use the initial configuration. Hit return to get started. And there is our router with its original router host name. Now, a few things you, you'll see there. One, to navigate, I can just press return, right? It won't cause any trouble. It won't execute any commands unless I've typed something. Tab will have a very similar effect unless I have something typed. Now, first thing we want to be able to do is learn how to navigate through the interfaces. If at any point I have no idea what commands I can type, I can just press question mark. As soon as you press question mark, that will then give you a list of all the commands that you can type in the mode that you are currently in. So at this moment in time, I'm in non-privileged mode. I'm not in global configuration mode. I am just in raw user mode. So there's very little that I can actually do here. In order for me to do something a little bit more practical, now, by the way, you can do things like ping, yes. Uh, you can use this to telnet to other devices, but really what I wanna do is start configuring this device. So to do that, I need to get into privileged mode. To get into privileged mode, the command is enable. Now, a couple things I wanna show is one, this is a habit that I've formed through many years of CLI configuration, and that's to always hit the, the tab key, repetitively, and that's to break up the commands that I've done into sort of blocks. This way, if I ever have a problem and I need to go back to see what I've done, when I scroll through the command, I can see the blocks of code that I've done quite easily. So rather than just having uh, a mass amount of syntax one line after the next, which makes it impossible or really hard to go back and try and find out what you did, it's a lot better for us to have these sort of spaces. So you'll notice that very often when I type a command, I'll use the tab key almost a little bit obsessively and too much, but that's to give it that sort of breaking point. Now, if I type just E, nothing else, just the letter E, and I press tab, what it's supposed to do is autocomplete the word for me. So if I type E and I press tab, you'll notice it's not completing anything. It's just repeating itself saying E the whole time. The reason for that is it doesn't know how to complete the word if multiple words begin with the same thing. So if I go back to the list of commands that were here, enable started with an E, so did exit. So because two words begin with E, it's pretty much telling me, hey buddy, I, I don't know which one you want me to use. To further prove that I could use question mark. And if I say E question mark, it says, well, which command did you mean, enable or exit? So, okay, it's enable that I'm looking for. Now, if I press tab now, it will auto-complete the word for me. Now, I don't have to auto-complete it. If I know what the word is that I'm trying to configure, so for example, if I try to type E, we know already that it won't know which command to use, right? E could be enable or exit. So if I press enter, it says, sorry, that's ambiguous. I don't know what you want me to do. But if I type EN and press return, it accepts it. So I don't have to type the entire command as long as I've typed enough for it to be able to identify which command that is, right? So that's how you would go into enable mode. Now, enable mode is privileged mode. Once we are here, press question mark again, and you'll see that the list of commands is very different. We now have a lot more that we can do. 
um, clock values over here, we can disable, which by the way is the opposite of enable, right? So we, that would take us back out of privileged mode. And I could do things like erase certain things or enable certain things. Uh, ping is still here. Reload is still here. And fundamentally, this is the primary place where you're going to be spending a lot of time when it comes to troubleshooting or trying to see what the configuration is. This mode will not allow you to configure anything. So for example, if I wanted to put an IP address on something, I can't do it here. If I wanted to do anything of any kind of tangible value, really, I can't do it through enable mode. I have to be in configuration mode. So this allows me to do a lot of different things in terms of show commands. So for example, I want to say, show me what my running configuration is. Now, don't worry if you don't know what that means at this point, but that then shows me the full configuration of what my device has. If I want to do something like see what show IP interface brief is, show IP interface brief, that's the abbreviated version, show IP interface brief, um, that will show me what the interfaces currently look like and what their statuses are. So, and we'll go into the details of each of these commands and learn how they all behave and when to use them. But at this point, just understand that I don't have to type full commands. So I don't have to type show IP interface brief, which is the full value. And it helps if you spell correctly. Let's try that again. Brief. Then I can just shorten it. So for example, is S enough? Question mark. No, there's four commands that start with S. Okay, what about SH? Well, that's only show. Okay, what about something that starts with an I? Well, that could be interface IP or IPv6. So IP would have to be the command. Question mark. Well, what is it that you want to see? You want to see the IP what exactly? IP ARP, the IP cache, the IP DHCP, IP EIGRP. The list is huge in the different things I can do here. So I want to have a look at the interface configuration. Now, is I enough? No, three words start with I. So what about IN? Still not enough. INT? Yeah, that's now interface. And then, of course, finally, the word brief. Now, to be honest, I don't have to type BRI for brief. B is sufficient. So I can literally say show IP int B, and that would give me the exact same syntax for what I'm looking for. So this is a few things that you can start getting used to when it comes to navigating and learning how to navigate on a Cisco device. And, and by the way, this is not just applicable to Cisco. This applies to a lot of different vendors. They all follow very similar sort of methods for being able to navigate and explore their interfaces. So the first thing, and most importantly, understanding how to be able to run through certain commands. Now, the other thing we can do is use the up arrows and down arrow keys on your keyboard that will scroll through commands that you have just typed, including the incorrect ones like that one, interface instead of interface. So you can scroll through your commands. If you want to type something again, of course, you can just go use the up, char uh, up character or push the up arrow, and that will allow you to navigate through the keys that you've already, or commands you've already put in. So just to reiterate here, if I go disable real quick, <clears throat> so disable, you'll notice that there is no hash key at the end of the host name. If I type enable, there is now a hash key. So you can obviously see immediately the difference between the mode that you're in would depend on what the actual end of the host name would have at the end of it, whether it's just the bracket or whether it's the hash. Now, if I want to configure something, for example, the host name, let's do that as an example here. Um, I can't, there's, for example, I think the word command is host name, tab. It goes, nope, don't know what that is, question mark, unrecognized. The reason why it doesn't know what the host name command is, is I'm not in the right place. To change the host name would to be to change configuration. To change configuration requires me to be in configuration mode. So a command that you'll be very familiar with typing, conf t. The full command for that is actually configure, but you have to tell it how you wish to configure via the terminal, which is the the interface that you're currently using. So configure terminal being the entire word or shortened version of that, conf t. That then changes your syntax to now show you that you are in configuration mode. If I want to get out of configuration mode, exit. Exit will take me one level back from where I was. I'll say that again as one level back. So if I go into conf T 
And then I decide I want to go into a particular interface, interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. You'll see I'm now in configuration interface mode. If I type exit, I go back one level. So I go from interface mode back to configuration. If I type exit again, I go back another level. However, if I'm in configuration terminal and then I'm in interface fast ethernet zero slash zero, again, don't worry if you don't know what that means just yet. This is about learning the navigation at this point. And I want to go all the way back to the very beginning. There's two ways to achieve that. The one is to type end. That'll take you straight back as many levels as you need to, to get right back to the very beginning. Or alternatively, let's go back into there. So interface fast ethernet zero slash zero, control Z. So if you're there and you hit control Z, that'll break you straight back to the main page. So these are some of the navigation commands um, on how to be able to navigate through the devices. And you notice that every time I do anything, as I mentioned, I hit the tab or the return key quite frequently. So you can quite easily see the breaks where I did certain configurations. They're broken up into easily digestible spaces and makes it a lot easier to read when you're scrolling back as well. So that said, let's go change the host name. So configuration terminal. While I'm inside of here, if I press question mark, again, a whole plethora of more commands that I can now type. The command that I wish to use in this particular case is host name. And host name then allows me to define what do I want to call this particular router. So here I can say this is branch one or BR one or whatever it is that I wish to actually call it. Um, probably you want to be a little bit more specific with what it actually is. What does branch one mean? Hmm. Maybe it should be the branch router number one. So maybe something in even a little bit more detailed, like what city is it in? But whatever it is that you choose, that is how you go and configure the host name. And you'll see that it is now changed to say BR dash one. Good. That is your very first configuration command. And that is the navigation. Now there is another command that you need to memorize from the very get-go, and that's to save your configuration. You've just made a change. If you were to lose power to the device or if you were to reboot it, it would lose that configuration that you've just made, and it would re-establish itself back with zero configuration and no changes. In order to do that, there's two ways to achieve this. The one is to type the command copy run start. The other alternative is to type command wr. Now, for things like exams, it's expected you understand what you're actually doing. So it's expected that you understand that you're copying the running configuration to the startup configuration. So copy run start is what you want to be looking at. Um, WR is the shortcut. So it makes it a little bit easier to type WR, which will save everything. But um, understand what they're actually doing. WR says write. So that's actually what the command means. Um, copy running config to startup config is if you tabbed it, you'd see that it should, ah, and it won't do it for me. Ha, ah, good example. Copy run start, press enter, and it goes, I don't know what you're talking about. What is copy? The reason for that is I'm in the wrong mode. I got to go back a level. So if I go back a level and then say copy run tab it auto completes to the startup config tab it, that is the full command. You press enter, it says, what do you want to call the destination file name? Well, it is called startup config. So hit enter, you are done. Your device is now saved and your configuration will now exist across a reboot. Now to wrap this video up and to prove that, let's turn off the device, turn it back on again, go to the CLI, watch it boot up. So we can actually, and by the way, because it's package racer, it does boot a lot quicker than a real device. Real devices would generally take a lot longer to turn on. That's it. Press return to get started. You notice how it didn't mention here to say, do you want to enter the initial configuration wizard? Because you've already configured something. Press enter, and there we are. It still kept its name. So now we can go into EN, and now we continue from there. So that's the navigation. Those are the first few things that you want to become familiar with on how to navigate a uh, Cisco device. So it's tab key, enter key to execute a particular command, enable configuration terminal, and uh, exit end and control Z. So those are some of the most important commands. There are a bunch more, but those are some of the most important ones to get you started.